Hello and welcome to this third and final uh, formal session of Church at Home, our Lenten Journey 2018. Uh, we have just heard a great proclamation from this uh, letter to the Hebrews. I think I need to make a correction. Uh, I began uh, several weeks ago by discussing these second readings from the Masses for Sunday uh, and saying that they were all from St. Paul. Of course, the letter to the Hebrews is not a letter of St. Paul. However, it is a great epistle in the heart of the New Testament, and it has a liturgical uh, framework to it. It is all about the sanctuary and the uh, temple worship uh, that is, of course, now uh, renewed in the life of heaven, and it is uh, the temple of Jesus' body, uh, his body, the church. Uh, and the famous line that I'm thinking about on this uh, week's reflection is, a son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. That word obedience is a great one. I looked it up in the dictionary and it is put together of two smaller words, ab audare. That means to listen to. So the one who is obedient is the one that listens to what is being said. In this uh, conversations or communicating the faith of the church at home, in this uh, church at home series, I'm thinking that this uh, call to listen might be the secret to sharing our faith. I think when we say share your faith or communicate your faith, we are often talking, thinking about talking. What I am understanding from uh, the Lord Jesus himself is that the most important and critical part of uh, communicating the faith is being able to listen. Listen, first of all, to God. Second of all, to listen to our hearts. And thirdly, to listen to the, our partner in conversation. You know, uh, it's, uh, they say, uh, Father Thomas Keating is famous for saying, that God's first language is silence. It might uh, be to our advantage to consider how much silence do we have in our lives. Do we think of any part of our prayer as silence or listening? Ab audare, to listen to. So maybe our invitation, before we are going to try to share our faith with our neighbor, to communicate the faith to another, we need to rededicate ourselves to listening. Can we listen to God's silent word in our hearts? And can we learn, as the Lord Jesus himself did, uh, can we learn uh, this obedience? Can we become obedient listeners to the Word of God, to God's presence in our hearts, and it would really help, wouldn't it? If we want to share our faith with someone else, we need to begin that process by listening to their life, to pay attention to their needs, to uh, give an ear and some space in our hearts to their troubles. Once we understand who they are, as St. Francis reminds us, let me first uh, understand before I hope to be understood. Uh, this has been a great journey in our uh, Lenten season, a church at home. We are called to consider uh, and the invitation to communicate the faith of the church at home. We can do that but it's going to necessitate that we sacrifice ourself, that we uh, lay down our lives in communion with others, and that we begin our talking by listening. I hope uh, this conversation in faith in this uh, Church at Home series this Lent has been a blessing in your lives. I know it has been in mine, and I look forward to celebrating this uh, great um, communication of the faith uh, with all of you, uh, not only at home, but back here at church.
Most of you probably know by now, this is my third year here, most of you probably know that I have two brothers, two younger brothers. One is a chef and one is a police officer. And I certainly love both of them, but I want to focus on the police officer. Not necessarily about him specifically as my brother, but as a police officer, because one of the things that constantly amazes me about our safety forces, our police officers, our firefighters, our military, is not just what they do, certainly what they do to protect us and keep us safe, but how well others are running away from danger, while others are running the other way from suffering, they're running towards it. Our second reading on this fifth Sunday of Lent is from Hebrews. And the author of Hebrews calls us to, same that, to have the same attitude as to, so, towards suffering as members of our safety forces might. Now, there were some early Christians. There was a school of thought amongst the early, some of the early Christians that found this idea that Jesus had actually physically suffered, so repulsive, that they believed it was a show, was just appearances. They just couldn't comprehend that Jesus, Lord, Savior, Messiah, had really actually suffered. He just appeared to, they thought. But we know, we know, we believe that that's not true, that Jesus is a human being, really did physically suffer, that he did go, undergo that pain, the challenge of being betrayed, of being beaten, of being whipped and scourged and mocked and put on the cross. His sufferings were very real, and so too are ours. But just like through Jesus' suffering, very real good came about through his obedience to God's call. You know, remember his prayer in the garden was not, God, I'm ready to suffer. His prayer in the garden was, Father, let this cup pass from me, but, but, that's the key word, if not, if not, then your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. In his example, his example of trust and obedience to God's plan, even when it led to suffering and persecution and struggle, his example shows us how, we, how to carry our crosses along our own roads today. How to accept the circumstances of our lives that we have no control over and being obedient to God's will in the here and now, even if that includes walking the, ro the road of suffering. Again, not that we're supposed to run towards suffering or enjoy it or embrace it or look forward to it or run towards it, but how do we, how are we obedient to God's will God's plan, no matter where that might lead us. Jesus came not just to sit up in heaven and give us a pep talk. Jesus not just, didn't just come down to earth to say, good luck. He, didn't, he isn't detached from our pain, from our suffering, our struggles. God gave us someone in Jesus who will walk through us, who will walk with us through our suffering and through our struggles. So as you sit here, tonight or this morning or this afternoon, depending on when you're watching this, when your church at home groups meets, I don't know what the sufferings that you bring with you are. I don't know what are those challenges that you carry with you in your life. What is it that weighs in your heart, that weighs on your mind? Maybe it's personal sufferings. Maybe it's the sufferings and struggles of someone you love, a spouse, a mom, a dad, a, a child, a friend, a family member. Maybe it's a challenge of living out our faith, of being a person of faith in our world today. Maybe there are health worries or job worries or worries about school or problems in our marriage or problems and strife in our family. Whatever they are, though, whatever those challenges, the struggles, the, faith, the sufferings that are keeping us maybe from following God's plan, from following and living out God's will in us and God's call in our lives, what we hear in this fifth Sunday of Lent, in this letter to the Hebrews, is that we have a walking partner. That we have a God who isn't just up in heaven saying, good luck down there. But God who is giving us what we need. A God who walked through it with us. And a God who will guide us through our suffering. As we prepare in this fifth Sunday of Lent to draw ever nearer towards Holy Week, and remember the ultimate obedience that led to our salvation. When we look at the pain, the challenges, the sufferings of our own lives, what do we see? Do we see only the cross, only the pain, only the suffering? 
or do we see the glory that comes through that cross? God can bring about good. God can bring about salvation even through the heaviest of crosses. Do we see in our sufferings or in our struggles trials simply to be run away from and avoided at all costs or crosses through which God is working to bring about our good? So this Holy Week, this fifth week of Lent and this upcoming Holy Week, embrace the cross, embrace the suffering and carry it with Christ. Hello everyone. Timmy say hi. Hi everyone. The priesthood uh, is the life of obedience. At the priest ordination, the priest takes a vow of obedience and obeys bishop like Jesus Christ obeyed our God's will. Timmy uh, is a very good at obedience. When I say, hey Timmy, sit here until I get back and he obeys my order without any complaints. Brothers and sisters, our Jesus Christ suffered on the cross, but obeyed God and became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. As our Timmy listens my order and obeys it, we need to seek our God's will and obey him. Well, maybe congratulations are in order. You have come to the end of our second year of Church at Home, this Lenten journey. This year's theme, if you will, was communicating the faith of the church at home. And I hope that your experience uh, has been exactly that, that you have met the Lord Jesus in the communion of the faithful right there in your living room or family room uh, by uh, making the sacrificial gift of sharing your faith and listening to the lives of others. We have something special uh, for this year's Church at Home uh, conclusion. I know I said that this was the last, the third and final uh, session uh, in my remarks about the reading, however, we have added uh, an opportunity and an invitation for you to consider this call to communicate the faith of the church. And uh, we are going to host it as a large group event. Uh, this coming Thursday, March 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. in the large hall of the parish, uh, we are going to have an evening reflecting upon our Catholic faith languages and how we might uh, maybe become a bit better practiced in sharing our personal faith statement. Won't you join uh, all of us on Thursday night, March 22nd, for this um, new feature to Church at Home, and it's going to be some home up at church. So why don't you come and we'll learn more about our beautiful Catholic faith, and we might even uh, develop some skills in sharing that faith uh, with others. God bless you again. Thanks for participating. I hope to see you on March 22nd.